Hi there. This is another episode of SOLIDWORKS tutorials with me, Ryan, your host, and I'm going to teach you the way SOLIDWORKS has to be taught, baby. I am going to take you step by step and introduce you to the concept of weldments in SOLIDWORKS. In this video, we're going to create a pergola as an example, and I'm going to put the focus where you have to learn the most. For those who know me already, my videos are structured a little bit differently. So we are talking about weldments, but I'm putting the focus on the art of 3D sketching, where you actually have to master if you want to have a smooth learning into weldments. So this is what I'm putting the focus on. When you're seeing a structure like this, you should know that each and every one of these profiles, these beams are based on one 3D sketch. So if I'm going to hide some of them, just to show you an example, you could see some lines going on here. Let me just hide as much as I can as fast as possible. You know, you should be able to work with 3D sketches in a good way. So let's just go and start a new canvas to create a pergola here. I would like to create a new sketch on top plane because we are looking at our pergola from above in SOLIDWORKS. I am going to draw a center rectangle, which you can find over here. It's the best type of rectangle that places your rectangle exactly in the center of the origin point. I said rectangle, but I think I'm going to create a square two meter by two meter. My units are set at millimeters. So I would put down 2000 by 2000, then I'm going to extrude it 10 millimeters. I don't care. We are just going to create our structure on top of this. Okay. It does not carry any function. 3D sketches, on the other hand, they do not require any plane. You can just immediately pick a tool and start drawing in the space that you have in front of you. The problem is when you rotate the angle of the camera, you will realize your sketch has been nothing more than a 2D sketch, even though you're using a 3D sketch tool. So let me just delete all of that and start over. We said we want to create a pergola in SOLIDWORKS, right? Usually we have four columns on each corner of this field. So on default, you might go over here, click here, go up, click here, go up and repeat it two more times. But I'm not going to do this because it's a waste of time. We know we are creating 2D sketches and it's an illusion. So the best way to do this, I would recommend you to take points, place four random points almost around each corner. These are some placeholders for my 3D sketch that I'm going to draw here for each column. In order to place these four points exactly on top of this face, I'm going to select them one at a time hold the control key down and select the surface as well. Then we go to the property manager and add on plane relation to that point. So you repeat that three more times. You can do it immediately from this pop-up menu as well. It's faster, this one and this one. Now I know for sure that these four points are on top of this surface. On top of that, I'm going to apply some dimensions, 250 by 250 for all four of them. Now we have all the four points fully defined as placeholders. Next is easy. You just rotate your plane a little bit to adjust and get ready for the 3D sketching. Make sure that the first one is vertical. Now you can finish the rest like this. Not all the four columns are in the right place. I would still select all of them and make sure they are all along the Y axis and select them again all and make them go equal. Next, I'm going to apply some height to it. If it's a pergola that people can walk underneath, it should be more than two meters. So let's just select two meters and leave it there. Next, we're going to have two big beams like this on top of these columns and some other small boards on top of the beams to cover the ceiling of the pergola. So let's just rotate the angle, draw a vertical line like this, select the line, hold the control key down and select this point. Make him go coincident, repeat it one more time. Select them, coincident, and this one should be along the X axis. Now you can drag it a little bit longer. Assign a distance from this point to this point for 500. Repeat it for this one as well, 500. You can repeat it here as well, or you can make these two aligned along the Z axis. Same for these two points because this is the Z axis. And now we have a fully defined sketch that we can rebuild. This is the 3D sketch, which is the base for our pergola structure. Next, we're going to add the weldments tab and go to structural member. 
you have different standards i'm gonna pick iso there are some default pipes s beam c channel and angled iron over there so we're gonna go to iso and pick sb beam and we're gonna pick the biggest 120 by 12 now we can pick these four sketches like this look we see the preview so it looks very fine i can click ok but before i do that as usual let's just take a look at the property manager and see what kind of options does the structural member offer you before you can click ok so this is what we picked iso sb beam configured 120 by 12 you can create a new group if you want to create more i beams on top of the other two you can and over here you can mirror the profile but since the profile over here is actually symmetrical, you don't see any change in that. In case you're working with a C-beam, you see the effect much more. But in case you're asking what your profile is, you just press on locate profile. It shows you the profile. The blue highlighted line is our 3D sketch and SOLIDWORKS is placing the midpoint of our profile where its center of mass is on top of this 3D sketch. If this is not what you want, you can actually click on locate profile. You just click on this and you place that point on top of the 3d sketch it depends on what you wish to have you can place it back in the center when we go further down we will see a section that allows you to change the angle of your profile and notice as i'm rotating my top beams the columns are being adjusted they're opening their cross section to allow for the top beam to sit on top of it so let's just Rotate it 90 degrees and see how I beam and look how our columns are going to be adjusted when we are placing all six beams at one go. Now, as I said, we need to have some beams on top of these. Again, we go back to drawing with 3D sketches. I'm going to look at my drawing from this angle because it makes sense the most. Draw a line like this. Select it. Control key. Pick another point on the profile. Maybe this one and make him go coincident. Now you can make sure that the distance from left and right equal so it looks more symmetrical when you finish your structure. So let's just say 300 and same for here. By doing this, we make sure that the structure is fully symmetrical when we are done with it. Structural member, I'm going to pick more SB beam, maybe smaller ones and pick this line like this but for the sake of showing you how trim or extend feature works i'm going to go down click on locate profile and pick this point instead now when i click ok notice that this beam is interfering with these two so i don't want this i'm gonna have to make some room on top of this beam to place the top beam but before i do that those of you who know me, you know that I have a website where I put weekly SOLIDWORKS tutorials on. Now, unfortunately, these tutorials are not free anymore and these are for members only. You need a membership. But recently, we just added two new sections, one of them being weldments, where we put weldment tutorials on and we are expanding it. Later on, I'm going to add a directory of customized profiles for your weldment projects. If you want to download it, it's going to be free whether you're a member or not. So make sure to at least sign up to the mailing list to get access to the download i would like to go back to the features tab use a normal linear pattern set it to bodies pick this beam and pattern it linearly in this way maybe 250 and one more click ok so this is what i would like to have now we go back to the weldment tab pick trim or extend the bodies that i want to be trimmed this one and this one obviously and the bodies that have to trim these two bodies are all the ones above so I'm going to pick all of them and click OK. So you might not notice what happened, but if I hide one of them, you will see that we actually made an opening here. It was not there before. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to roll this back up to undo the last step and you will see this was not there. They were actually interfering. We, we already have our structure in place, which looks fine, but we just established that this is not very stable. This is actually very shaky. Maybe we want to put too much weight on top of these bars on the top. So I would like to create a cross between these two only using pipes. So I will go back to 3D sketch this time. It's much easier because we have our other sketch in place and we connect these two together, rebuild it, go back to a structural memory this time maybe work with a pipe not that big one a small one and select these two new group this one so they are interfering that's fine and you can click ok let's just see how it looks like when it goes here obviously this pipe is cutting through this beam and that beam we don't want this so we go to trim the body that has to be trimmed is the pipe and the trimming bodies are this and this 
so you can get rid of the rest and repeat it for here as well again this one has to be trimmed these two bodies trim it you can get rid of it all right guys lastly i want to show you how to trim your structural member according to the drawing that you like to have so let's just say we want to change the end of our beam over here to something more beautiful like this so what i do is i will pick a plane that is normal to the screen in this case the right plane draw a 2d sketch maybe a spline connect these two points together Now you can go to the surfaces tab, extrude it all the way through all in both directions. Click OK. Now you can go back to Weldman's tab and use this surface body as the cutting tool for all these structural members that we have to cut them. By the way, I'm pressing tab on the keyboard to hide this extra material that we don't want to have. Now this is how I trimmed the end of our beam over here. Well guys, this is Ryan, I'm signing off. I hope you liked this video and took something new with yourself and I'm gonna work on the next video, going a little bit into details for developments and make a more appealing video for you. By the way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Your feedback is very much appreciated. If it's positive or negative, I like to hear from you guys. I want to understand what it is that you like to learn and I wanna make contents more appealing to you. So do not hesitate to let me know your opinion. If it's harsh, I don't care. Just let me know. Just <laughs> take care, bye.